Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or good morning. My name is Andre, and together I will learn you how to play with databases Android. It's very easy to learn, so let's get going. First thing you want to do is to create a simple application, very simple with just to edit text, name and age, a simple button, and maybe you want to throw in a log file. So pause this video create this very simple application with two uh, edit uh, texts and uh, a text view and a button and uh, continue after that so after you've done it you might have something like this okay let's get going and see how we reach it first of all you want to search in Google Realm Android Docs and you will want to end up in this page for the documentation of Android. As you see, it's really, really nicely done. So, first thing, let's see how we initialize the Realm database. So, just search for application and you will see that you need to put some stuff into the Gradle file and here it's not helpful it, it doesn't say the version you should complete it with the version which is now 1.0.0 so open your build Gradle file and add this one here it should look something like this might be 1.1 .1 the time you see this video but hopefully it doesn't change too much. There's another Gradle file that you need to, to modify, which is an application Gradle file, and you have to apply this plugin. So go ahead, open the build Gradle file of the application, and you have to apply this plugin. More or less, this, this Gradle file should look something like this. Okay, after you've done this, just search for uh, application one more time and you see the default RAM configuration and you should have a base application that extends application where you initialize your stuff. So, let's go ahead and create it, base application extends application control and O in Windows I don't know what the shortcut in Mac to override this method or create and be sure to add it in the manifest as Android name base application otherwise it won't work okay and here we have to copy these two lines for now later we will add more stuff to this configuration import them and we're good to go and here it gives us an example how to use a realm uh, database so if we go to our activity we get we initialize it here actually let's create a more a field and I want to close it on, on destroy. Okay. Now we should uh, create a model based uh, with what we want to save because we, we need a model for this. So I'm going to create a package name model. And here I'm going to create a person. And the, this class must extends realm uh, wait one second I forgot must extend realm object see here in the getting started it would be nice to if you can pause a little and uh, skim uh, through this documentation okay and here we can define whatever you want 
page. Let's go get the setters. All right, let's override that to string. This should be it for now. Okay, so how do we save stuff? So let's create two methods, save into database and here we should pass a person, so let's actually let's put directly here you should do some uh, some validation uh, stuff. Okay. Okay. I want it to be it, this one. And uh, let's have another one, refresh views. And in here, in refresh views, I'm gonna put the read from DB, show in text to log. So first, first of all, let's code this one, save into database. So if we go to right, uh, you might see that, that there are multiple op options to to do it, but the easiest one uh, should be this one with transaction blocks, okay? And more, the best one should be asynchronous, asynchronous transactions and Actually, let's go ahead and use directly this one, so we don't you don't complicate your memory with useless stuff. So, just copy paste them here. Let's modify this one to suit our needs. Notify that this uses BG Realm and not this Realm database. Okay which is here and we have here set name we'll use our name set age age okay and on success let's and on error okay now now that uh, we save the stuff let's go ahead and read it so we go to queries and So we have a results, which is a type of persons. So and here we can use lots of operators that you can you can read here in conditions, modifiers, sorting, uh, and so on. I just want to get them all. So, okay, let's do like this. Okay. 
So we see here in the log that it was stored okay. Let's add another one, gm22. And there we have it. Our nice database with reading and writing. So this is like the basics of uh, reading and writing into the database and what we do now is clean up a little bit this stuff first thing we have to do once we have this uh, reading and writing correctly done is take care of this ugly nested code that looks like javascript to me and i hate javascript so to do this we're gonna use lambdas so if you look a, a little again into the realm um, configuration you see that uh, it has support for lambdas so go, let's go ahead and add in our application also Lambda support. And uh, in case it doesn't appear, you know you have to do a little bit more. So let's search like GitHub Android the ultimate Android app template. You should see one of my GitHub. Uh, Templates you can just start it and fork it. So here in build.gradle is this one retro lambda. Actually, I have to put this one retro lambda here. This is for other stuff. And here in the app. To apply this plugin. And also tell copy all this file. Of course you should have uh, Java 8 installed. Don't have to remember all this stuff. Just go to my GitHub project and copy paste them for there. Okay, now uh, magically tells us that this expression can be replaced for this lambda. So let's go ahead and replace everything. So now it might look a little bit more hard to read, but once you get used to work with lambdas, you'll see that they improve your readability of the code much more. Okay, so this should be the first part of this tutorial. I'm waiting for you in the second part of this tutorial get some more stuff done. See you then.